Right, so what kind of problems do these guys present? Well, they got the leading back in the country and the leading receiver, so that's the start of it, and a quarterback that's very mobile. So, I mean, it's a uh, it's really cool system, and I think they don't get enough credit for how well they run the ball and how well they or how good they are up front. So, you know, uh, the tailback's unique because he's got, you know, big, big time speed. So, if you give him, a, he misses, if you miss a one on one tackle with him, he really makes you pay. And then if you load up the box and you, you go out on the outside one on one with Wallace. I mean, it's not even a 50 50 ball. It's like 90 10 him. So, I mean, if you put it in the ballpark, he, he comes down with it. He's really done, I think, probably, Chip, he's probably the most complete receiver in the country. He runs every route as hard as he can, even when he doesn't get the ball. If the ball goes up in the air, he's going to come down unless, you know, he's been PI'd like nine times this year in three games. And then he, he likes the block. So, I mean, it's. Uh, a unique challenge for us. Gallup, does, it doesn't seem like Mike gets enough credit for being so fundamentally sound every year. I mean, the, the names change, but the offense is Absolutely. still good. I mean, if you look at that offense, they're so committed to running the football every year. I mean, mm -hmm. versus us in 17, it was 51 rushes, and 18, it was 51 rushes, and we expect the same thing. Yeah. So, I mean, there is a a commitment to to pounding the ball and, and, and trying to make people tap out. I mean, it's it, but to go along with its high pace and its spread and has those elements and they'll throw the ball down the field. But the fundamental part of him wanting to run the football and, mm -hmm. and wear on people has been consistent since we've, we've played him the last couple of years. Are you seeing any success with rushing just your your guys on the line? Uh, at times, three, three at, 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 at times we are. I mean, I think Malcolm Roach is, is really, really playing well. I do. I mean, to me, he's a guy that, and I wish you guys could be at practice, but you're not. But, I mean, he's, he's outstanding in practice. And he's, he's playing at a high level. I said that after LSU, say it after Rice. But he's a guy that I really think has elevated himself personally, professionally, and has really helped us defensively. He runs that show out there. He feels like I'm the vet. He's played so many different spots for us in the past two years, so he knows our system so well. But he's playing at a high level. What has Chris Brown done since you all arrived on campus to really to not only go from a red shirt, but among all these talented defensive backs to have a starting spot? Yeah, I mean, I can go back when you guys were asking the question, you know, when is Chris going to get in there and do that? And um, to me, Chris has, has really bought into us and what we, what we were doing. You know, at first it was probably like, you know, I should play and because I'm, I've been here and I should do things. And when he's picked up his practice habits, you know, especially this fall camp, I, I've, I said this a couple of weeks ago, that he was by far our best player. And when we lined up versus La Tech, I was like, this guy's going to play really, really well. And he's done it every week. He just plays with such a confidence you know, when you watch some of our guys in there, maybe a half a step slow or just miss a play, he doesn't care. You know, he just goes and he figures it out. So that that thing, that part is to go along with, he's very talented, That, but the mental aspect of him just cutting it loose and not, not being afraid of failure separates him from a lot of our guys. So uh, very proud of him because our, our kids really respect him. Our coaching staff obviously respects uh, uh, him, but um, he, he's becoming a captain-like guy, even though he has does not have that tag. What has changed for Anthony and Kobe since last year's start? In terms of How just they overall, yeah, they they're, it's it's they've gotten better. You know, they were put in a kind of a rough spot last year to go out there and go against these guys. But it's like any other; that's the hardest position. I always thought offensively, a young quarterback and. On defense, a young corner, the two positions that are really, really tough to play when you're young. So they've they've uh, they've gotten a lot better. They continue to get better, and it's you know it's one of those things where you, you have to be smart when you coach them because younger guys, you give them so much information they can process, you know, and sometimes it slows them down. Sometimes when you're really, really you know demanding on them, they could you know they put them on their heels. So there's you know Jason and myself and, and everybody on the staff. You know, hey, we're we're learning as we're going through practice. So they but they've gotten better. How much attack, of tackling seemed to be an issue the first couple of games. It seemed like you guys were really solid. Didn't see a lot of missed tackles against Rice. Did you feel like it was a little bit better? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's part of the game. I mean, it's part of the guys you're going against sometimes, too. So, I mean, you get some of these elite guys and you miss some tackles. But we do it every day. Our Tuesday practices, like, versus our look teams, are, they're essentially live. So it's one of those things where we don't expect, you know, one-on-one -on -one guy to make 100% of the tackles. So we really put emphasis on our guys running to the football because, I mean, if a, a guy makes three guys miss, that, that is, that's, that's terrible tackling. But if a guy's one-on-one -on -one with somebody and he's, he's a really good player, it's going to be a low percentage of getting him on the ground. So the, our emphasis is always go up and take your shot, don't hesitate, and count on the other 10 guys to, to help you out. Were you glad to see TQ finally get some, <coughs> get some push? Yeah, I was. I mean, to me, it's like I, I've said this in the past with him, is that the talent and all that stuff is there. It's just... You know, that, that it's kind of like what I said about Chris, where it's just like, okay, I miss this, I miss it, who cares? I'm right. going to the next one and I'll figure it out next time. And then TQ can let some things linger on him where it's like, you know, he cares so much mm -hmm. that he's disappointed that maybe he let us down or, you know, he's, you know, he's upset at himself. And I'm like, forget about that, man. Forget right. about that. Just use your talent, go in there, do the things that you're supposed to do and let the plays come to you. Don't press, don't be down on yourself if you do miss a play, and let's just continue to get better. Because that's, that's that is exactly what Coburn also said with us Tuesday, is that he felt like he was playing, you know, trying not to mess up, yeah. as opposed to going hard. Well, sometimes that's what happens with younger kids, and these are great people now. I, mm -hmm. I think when these last three classes, not only are we recruited really well athletically, but, you know, just the the makeup of all these guys they yeah. they they want to do well and they they don't they don't want to let us down and sometimes that's a little bit like hey okay we, we get it i mean right. we know you care we're good but don't go out there and think about us just just go play ball like you sure. did when you were a little kid and then the rest of that stuff we can coach up so sometimes that happens with younger guys mm -hmm. to me that was like cb cb was the same way and the cb gets a little bit older and like okay tell me what the rules are tell me where i have to be at and i'm right. good you know, so we mm -hmm. just have to start. That's a kind of a mentality, and sometimes that takes a little bit of time to, to get, to get adjusted. Yeah. How get many of uh, Sanders' average of 73 yards rushing is by design, and how much of it is improvised? Yeah, it's it, it's a lot. I mean, they have some QB draw, and then they have some kind of uh, like fear option type of stuff that is by design. And then you know, keep an eye on them even on third down because they'll run them on third down. But he's uh, He's got really good vision, and if you don't trap him inside, he gets loose and he becomes uh, very explosive. So a little bit of both. How, how good of a job does Coach Gundy do of just finding teams' weaknesses and maybe just <laughs> showing things, you know, seeing things on on game day that maybe you didn't know always see on film? I think they all. I think our league is as, as good as it comes to of, of looking at ma overall matchups is the first thing that they do. So if they see somebody that they want to go after, they'll, they'll go after them. And then schematically, I think we all do this. We all kind of have little wrinkles that we'll put in from week to week to see if we're, you know, are we paying attention or are we taking a look up top in the box. That's kind of what this league is. I think they have their system in place. There are a couple things that are a little bit different. Uh, but overall, if you look at them from two years ago to last year to this year, the, I mean, 85% of it looks the same. Um, but there'll always be one or two things in there. Um, I think we all do it in conference games where it's like, because we know our opponents so well because either through recruiting or whether it's because we played them in the last couple of years, we've kind of, hey, listen, this is the guy that maybe we could have gone, you know, last year. We can go after him again this year. He's kind of the same dude, and they'll do the same thing to us. So, yeah, to me, the biggest, the biggest thing is making sure that the press box, and even if we can see it down on the field, that's communicated as quick as possible because you don't want to come in on Sunday and find out they bust you on you a couple of things that you didn't adjust to. Is Deshaun showing you more? Yeah, he is. Jameson? He is. I think all those guys are, like, eager – right now and I think there is a um, an urgency of all four of those guys to try to hey listen let's let's get this right and I think they practice that way there's competition they understand that you know the the best two guys will be the starters and then the first guy in will be the first guy in so there is a lot more urgency in the last couple of weeks is the starting lineup up for grabs at corner right uh, now? uh yes and we'll make the decision on Thursday. We, we you know, um, as you take a look at it, nobody has, you know, I, I, like I said before, I thought Jalen 
once again, I think he has a lot of talent going into it, but we're trying to keep it as competitive as possible. We don't want to take the foot off the gas on these guys. So this way, when we get out of Thursday's practice, whoever's the most consistent makes the most plays is the two guys are going to be out there. Playing off your chip. Um, Kenyatta Watson, you guys yeah. talked about how smart he was yeah. and, and stuff going in. He hasn't seen it. What, what does he need to do in order to kind of get just that Just to me, it's just continued fundamentals, um, understand what we're doing. We'll, if, if he gets in there, we'd be very, very simple in terms of what we ask him. But he's showing some signs, you know, the last couple weeks of improving. And like I said, it's, it's every person that's in that room is going to have an opportunity to do it. So he's one of the guys that will be in the mix. Just, but you touched on it, though. I mean, because obviously last year without Chris and Devontae, they went right at yeah. those guys. I mean, yeah. do you go to them and say, hey, if they're, they're going to see the same guys out there. Oh, she's going to come at you hot and heavy. Yeah, I mean, they, they know it. I mean, we, we try our best. I mean, in ter- I mean, in-house, like when Jason goes into his meeting room, I mean, he's explained that to him. But mm-hmm. we try our best to try to separate last year. I think sure. there is, you know, there's an awful taste in your mouth with, but you, you know, to go back and relive stuff when we're a little bit different, they're a little bit different, um, is sometimes you, our younger group might lose their focus on what's happening right now. But no, that's been explained. That Those kids know, they watch that tape. We've watched that tape a, a lot and they know what happened out there. So yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll understand what they have to do. Kind of shake what Juwan did in a, against an offense that's where everything's in front of him and, yeah. and tell him to and have him build off it when he's going to have to be moving backwards a lot. Yeah, he'll be fine. I mean, he's a really, uh, you know, he's got great instincts and great vision, and we've seen it beforehand. We're just trying to get him in the shape. You know, he's a guy that got here a little bit later, and I think he's in really good shape right now, and he can play the pass game too. It's it's not a problem. It's just, you know, he's just continue to get better, but you're going to see more and more of him as we move forward. I was impressed with some of the stuff he, he, he did out in the field, and I know, granted, it's, you know, some of the stuff was, you know, just run the football left and right and add yourself on and got himself a sack, but... He, he does have the talent to, to do the things in space that, that need to be done. So I've been happy with him. It's just, you know, don't want to say much more until, you know, he lines up in our league and shows that, like, exactly what you said, if he can play against some spread teams. Coach, were you able to take a look at Charles's highlights from the Texans? You know what, I did, and I asked, I asked Oscar, I said, because I, I, I usually – you know, when we we break for dinner on Sunday nights, I kind of go through our guys and find out statistically. And I saw the sack, and so I asked OG. I said, "Did Charles call you about a sack?" He said, "Yeah, Charles called me about the sack." <laughs> so, yeah, I, was it a strip sack? Was it pretty yeah. nice? Mm-hmm. That's good for him, man. Is that right? That's okay. That's good for Charles, man. We're we're really happy, and I know those guys have expressed to us how happy, how pleased they are of his development. So. Uh, Wish him the best. I hope he has the longest career ever. So I guess to get back to the initial question about whether you can get pressure with four yeah. guys up front. I think it depends, Chip. I think what's going to end up happening in this game is it's going to be the balance of being able to cover him to the balance of being able to stop him from scrambling around and extending plays and using his feet. So that I mean that is you know I can't give you an answer on that until we find out because I think it'll be ever-changing in the game. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a field deal by us and, and figure out what's hurting us the most and to change it up. So we'll find out what goes down in this game. But, you know, when you got a mobile quarterback, you know, those are the things that you got to think about is sending some people at him to make sure he's not running around because I think that's when he's at his best, either running the football or looking downfield and extending plays. Will you send help Last one. to your corners on, on Thailand or is that going to be one-on-one? Well, without getting the specifics of the game plan, I mean, to me, it's like he's he's beat up everybody that they played against. So, I mean, to me, it's, he's going to go have a whole bunch of confidence going into this. So, like I said beforehand, yeah. we um, we go into it knowing that they got a great tailback, and we know they got a great tail or a receiver, and we got to just mix and match. So, we got to just play that game. Uh, you know, last, year, last week we talked about Keontae and how hard he is on himself, but this week um, it was interesting to see the guys uh, crowding around our scrum and, you know, uh, Coburn and a couple other guys, they were excited for him yeah. to kind of get back on the horse and, and get back out there. Did you notice any bounce in 26th step or um, anything different mood this week? Or 
Yeah, maybe a little, but I, you know, he's always been that way. Just because he's hard on himself doesn't mean he doesn't love playing the game and doesn't have a bounce in his step. He's just hard on himself. And mm-hmm. we were talking about that earlier. He's just a fierce competitor, and um, he's trying to be the best running back he can be. So he challenges himself all the time, and he pushes himself, and that's a really good thing. And he demands greatness, and and I think that's what makes him what he is, to be honest with you. And it was good to see him um, get some some good open runs and nice cuts mm-hmm. and made a guy miss and score a touchdown. Like all the things that he's worked really hard at trying to do over the last couple of years have kind of tied into some of the, the game yeah. for him. What did you see from Malcolm in his first start and what can you kind of improve on going forward? You know, I thought Malcolm did a good job. He made some uh, a big third down catch for us early in the game. Um, you know, actually two I, I, that I can think of off the top of my head. They were big catches for us. They kept us on the field and drives, and that was one of the things we had to do in the game. But, you know, he's just continuing to get better. You know, he's he's still young, and he's learning things. And, he's again, uh, I got no problem with his work ethic, with his ability to – he's studying the game. He's trying to get better. It's just going to come with more and more experience. How do you think Derek was able to adjust to having to go – I was really pleased with him. Boy, he played really well. You know, he's playing tackle. He kind of gets his ankle rolled up, had to come out for a play, and next thing you know, he's playing center. And, you know, uh, Herb gets a lot of credit for for cross-training those guys. And, you know, for us getting him in there, even Rafiti had to go in for a play. It was good to see him get in there in a crucial situation and, you know, do what he's coached to do. And none of that's easy. Standing over there talking to your buddies, and all of a sudden it's getting the game, and you're sna- you know you're looking through your legs, snapping the ball or whatever. Like that's that's not easy to do. So I thought I thought Derek had a really good game for us, really good game. You guys are scoring, I think, somewhere between like 50 and 60 percent of your drives that you guys have had this season. You may know it specifically. Why do you think it's been flowing, you know, so well and, and ending the way that you would hope it to? Um, you know, some of the things that we've talked about, one, we got veteran players, so they, they've been in these situations before, so things are coming a little bit um, smoother, per se. Um, and then, you know, we, we put an emphasis on the red zone. Obviously, we felt like one of the games we didn't do that and score touchdowns in the red zone, and, you know, in hindsight, probably cost us the game. So we keep focusing on when we get down there, we got to score touchdowns. Do you, do you- Speaking of putting together drives, I mean, I don't know how you reward the guys, but, but, but to go 75, 80, 90 yards without making mistakes, I mean, that, that takes some doing. It right? does. You so know, what do you make of that? Well, Those long, we've those made long. some mistakes. We overcome them, mm-hmm. right? So that's the thing. Our guys are stepping up and making plays, and and that's been our mantra, right? It's it's just 1-0, like move on to the next play. Right. You're going to make some mistakes. Everybody does. You're, we're going to – miss a block, throw a bad pass, run a wrong route. The key is don't let that fester. Don't, mm-hmm. don't let that keep building. Move on to the next play and execute. And if we execute better than they do, we have a greater chance of success for the next play. And then that's part of what's kept us on the field so much. Mm-hmm. What, um, in terms of the attitude of practice, the juice of practice this week, how's it been? It's been good. I mean, uh, this is a different group, right? I know Coach Herman's talked a lot about it, right? Very professional group, uh, experienced group, hardworking group. There's not a lot of raw, raw, co- you know, coach raw, raw. They go out there, they, they, you know, punch a clock and go to work. And they enjoy being around each other. They enjoy playing the game. They're playing offensively right now. We're playing with some confidence. Um, so, I mean, that's every day, and. You know, it, it's taken time to get to that point. I think the the Sam Ellingers, the, you know, Colin Johnsons of the world, the Shackelfords, the guys that were here, the Kerstetters, Okafors, and that were at the beginning, um, feel it more so than the younger players because they don't know any different. But the older players, they feel it. They can sense that this team's a little bit different than the other teams. Who are the guys on the Oklahoma State defense? That y'all have really taken note of in preparation? Well, you know, I, they got some veteran back end players. You know, I think both corners are really good players. Um, I think um, they tackle well in the secondary. 
I think both safeties uh, do a nice job. Number 20, Rodriguez, seems to make a lot of plays for him right now. Um, those guys have kind of stood out. Did you see what you wanted to see from Danny last week in his first action, action back? And did, will he increase his role going forward? Yeah, like I was really pleased to see Danny. You know, um, we knew we, we were going to probably get him back first. Um, how much we would have got out of him going into this game against Rice was unknown. It was good to get him, to be honest with you. And, um, and yes, I, I think his his role could increase more. Yeah. About Casey, um, you know, you asked, you know, he's getting game time, right? So you're yeah. being able to kind of talk to him, coach him, talk about the conversations, what you're seeing, and the benefit that he's Well, it, it's huge that he's getting in the game. Um, He's going to be, like I keep telling you, I think he'll be a dynamic player for us. He's just got to continue to learn. Um, he's, he's done some good things. I mean, it's it's never easy going in at the end of the game because you don't, hey, let's not throw it and don't do your RPOs, just kind of hand the ball off. And so sometimes it's hard to judge how effective he technically is doing because you're not really always running the offense per se when he's in the ball game. So. Um, but he's handled his role really well. He's engaged in the games. He talks to Sam, tells him what he sees. Um, he's kind of a go between me and Sam sometimes. So I like um, I like where he's at right now. What about Even the conversations that you're able to have with him when you know when you guys are breaking down film, right? It's got to be a little bit more detailed. And oh yeah, it, it always is. He's one play away. So I mean, that's been since May or since April. Go ahead. Even on the play, he got sacked. He slid. Did a moved. great pocket. Yeah. He did a great pocket. Just my coaching point there is, hey, look, I mean, you, you push the pocket up, you half man slid. At some point, get out of there. Like, your timing's off the routes. If guys were open, they're covered. Like, you're coming back and kind of trying to set back up to see what's open downfield. Probably not going to look good anyways. So at that point, if you got to push up, you got to make two moves in a pocket, get out. And, he, and he's a, a good runner to be able to do that. During, so During camp, Coach Herman, I think you also mentioned y'all are still looking for offensive linemen number seven and eight to round out that group of eight going into the game. You felt good about have those two guys stepped up yet? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think different guys, different weeks have done things. Um, you know, I know those top six have been getting most of the playing time um, right now. Herb could probably fill you in a little bit more, but on the next guy that he feels most comfortable. I think Christian Jones did some good things in the ball game. Coach, um, during the LSU game, there was a sequence where you guys went tempo like Sam through four vertical routes uh, against cover two. The next play ends up throwing the touchdown to Brandon Eagles, but he caught them with only 10 men on the field. Yeah. Um, how proud of you were for doing that? And I mean, have you ever seen a, or have you ever had a player do that or a quarterback? Well, it was part of our plan for that in that certain situation and down in distance was to try to we, we knew they had different um, third down packages and so we were trying to catch them in a in a switch which we did and uh, Sam took advantage of it um, and Brendan Eagles made a really good play for us.